So we heard in the first reading, the darkness was pretty great for Atalia, or Atalia, however you say it, um, because she put all of her trust, all of her hope, all of her eggs in the same basket, which was to be powerful. Things of this world, which Jesus obviously preaches against. There's a story about a woman. Um, she was very wealthy. She lived in a beautiful mansion. And although she wasn't a bad person, she also didn't go out of her way to help people. She did what was necessary, and that was about it. And as life would have it, death came, and she appeared before the judgment seat, and she was told that she could enter the kingdom. And St. Peter told her, your guardian angel will bring you to your final resting place, to your eternal home. And so they went along many streets, many avenues, beautiful places, filled with mansions, gorgeous mansions, one more beautiful than the next. As they continued that journey, the houses became, the dwelling places became much more modest, till finally they got to a street, and at the end of the street was a very simple, very plain one-room shack. And the angel said to her, that's your eternal home. The woman looked at the angel and she said, there must be some mistake. I lived in a mansion on earth. She said, well, with all that you sent of good deeds to heaven, that's as much as we could build for you. Where your treasures are should be in your heart. Where your treasures are should be in heaven. And the treasures that we bring with us to heaven from this world are certainly not financial goods. They're not the things that we have or that we hold on to, that we grasp onto in this world. If you've ever seen people crossing the street or even drying, you know, driving, you know that everyone holds on to a cell phone. There are no cell phones in heaven. I don't know that for certainty, but I'm pretty sure that there, we're not going to need anything there to communicate because our communication will be, as always, between us and God, as it should be. The... Um, story that I'm going to tell next is very interesting, and it's about the patron saint of St. Anthony Paris, St. Anthony of Padua or Lisbon. If you're Portuguese, it's only St. Anthony of Lisbon. For where your treasure is, there also your heart will be. During his life, Anthony was invited to celebrate the Mass of someone who had just died, and he was a wealthy man. He was a user if you remember your um, Shakespeare and Hamlet, Polonius tells Laertes, neither a lender or a borrower be, because it makes enemies. Users were men who would take advantage of the poor. As the financial economic system changed, instead of bartering to money, people used money and they needed to borrow. A user would be one who would extract more or desire more. Think of the Merchant of Venice and the user there, how he wanted to extract a pound of flesh. And the judge said, you can have your pound of flesh, but not a drop of blood more. Anthony is at this funeral, and he says, this man doesn't deserve all of this pomp and all of this grandeur, because he didn't put his faith in God, but in his treasure. He said, as a matter of fact, if you open his chest, you'll find that his heart is not there. Because where your treasure is, there will be your heart. He told them, his heart is going to be in his money box. And so naturally the family was all concerned and they called in a physician who cut the man open. Lo and behold, there was no heart, just as St. Anthony had predicted, or had foretold. They went to the man's treasure, to the money box, and there, they found the man's heart, not where it belonged. And certainly we know that this man would not be getting any mansion in heaven, but a little shack, if that. And so the lesson for us is build up your treasure with the good deeds that you do for one another, for our brothers and sisters, especially those most in need, the migrant, the refugee, the poor, those who have no food, no clothing, who lose their parents, who lose their children. We must be in favor of these people. That is our mission 
as the baptized, as disciples in Jesus Christ, serving one Lord, one God, our Father in heaven.